गुड मॉर्निंग लेट स्टार्ट द क्लास विद दी मंत्रस ओम गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः ओम भू भव स्वाहा तत्सवित्र वरे नयम भर्गो देवस्य धीमहि दियो यो न प्रचोदयात अस्तो मा सतगम्या तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गम्या मृत्योर मा अमृतम गम्या ओम सहना वबत सहना भुनत सह वीर्यम करवा वही तेजस्वी नाव धी तमस्त मा विद्विषा वही ओम शांति 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 so today is our vivek chuda manish day we ended our last week's class with verse number 321 very clearly this great acharya is telling us in this verse one should never neglect one's steady attunement with the brahm okay it's very clear भगवान सनत कुमार द क्रिएटर्स ओन सन हैज कॉल्ड दिस नेग्लिजेंस एज डेथ इट सेल्फ ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज अर्लियर दिस मॉर्निंग टू द किड्स आई वॉज टेलिंग दम बिफोर यू ईट thank god actively thank god mentally if you want to say it verbally also that's okay but mentally at least put your hands together thank god we connect with god every time we eat when we sleep when we wake up so then it becomes a habit and then it then we can do this one should never neglect one's steady attunement with the brahma that's what he is telling us so just like with the kids we should remember that too we got to check ourselves did i thank god enough today before going out after coming back home before i turned the car on before i reached somewhere am i connected with god or not okay that's what he is saying this is even brahma's son he says if we don't do it it's a death to us okay so let's see what else he says to us in the next verse 323 न प्रमादात अनर्थः अन्य ज्ञानिनः स्वरूप रूपतः ततः मोह तथा अहमदी तथा बंधा तथा व्यथा न मींस नो प्रमादात केयरलेसनेस अनर्थः डेंजर लाइक ए हार्मफुल अन्य अदर ज्ञानिना फॉर ए ज्ञान नहीं फॉर द मैन ऑफ विजडम स्वरूप रूपता अबाउट हिज ओन रियल नेचर स्वरूप रूप तथा फ्रॉम दिस मोह डिल्यूशन तथा देर फॉर अहम दी इगोइजम अगेन तथा देर फोर बंधा बॉन्डेज तथा देर एफ्टर व्यथा मिजरे ब्यूटिफुल वर्स ही सेज नो ग्रेटर डेंजर इज देयर फॉर द मैन ऑफ विजडम देन केयरलेसनेस अबाउट इज ओन रियल नेचर रियल नेचर इज वॉट आत्मा विच इज नथिंग बट पार्ट ऑफ परमात्मा 
So no greater danger is there for the man of wisdom than carelessness about his own real nature. Pramad. Pramad means carelessness also. Pramad means negligence also. When we become negligent about it. From this comes. So if we forget who we are, what happens? From this comes delusion. Then egoism. And that is followed by bondage. And then by misery. So if we are feeling miserable, <laughs> clearly the reason is that we have forgotten who we are. We are nothing but bliss, but we are miserable because we have slided down on this slope. So that's why very clearly he says for a seeker, a spiritual seeker, because that's a wise person. See, wisdom is to know what my goal in life is. So for a wise person, there's nothing more tragic than the forgetfulness of his own real nature. We should think about it. How many times I forgot who I am today? What made me forget? Because otherwise, there's a volcano of other sorrows. They are, they are right there. They are not far. So forgetting our real nature means, what did he tell us earlier? Forgetting our real nature really means that non-apprehension of the reality. When there's a non-apprehension of the reality, what happens? Then there's a misapprehension of reality. In the dark, we don't see the rope and we think it's a snake. So non-apprehension takes us to misapprehension. And this is exactly what happens with our self too. From self-forgetfulness starts delusion, moha. That's what he says, moha tataha ahamdhi. From delusion comes the ahamdhi, ego. We start identifying ourselves with the body or with the relationships or with what we have acquired, what we have accumulated or what other people call us. That's ahamati. And from this ego sense comes the bondage, bandhan. And from bandhan breeds the vyatha. See, vyatha we don't want, misery we don't want. So if, you don't, if we don't want to be miserable, just go back. What needs to be done? Because otherwise, when we forget our own real nature, we are forgetting Brahma also. How can we remember God if we don't even know who we are? We have deluded ourselves. We have created a thick cloud on ourselves. So in order to release ourselves from it, Normally what happens in order to release from the misery, we run after the worldly objects or the worldly people, emotions, thoughts. We exert ourselves and we feel more miserable. Even the bondage becomes thicker and thicker because we really don't know the reality. That's how the desires keep on growing. And in order to fulfill the desires, we strive. We tire ourselves. We go through the sweating and the agony also. And if the desires do get fulfilled, then worries. I desire to have something, I have it, then I worry. Will somebody else will have better than I have? Or will somebody steal it? Then more worries. So if our desires are not fulfilled, Certainly we are unhappy, but if we get them, we want more. We are never satisfied. And this is what the vyatha really means over here. Okay, tatha vyatha. And the fall comes. 
So, but remember that it started from a non apprehension, not knowing who you are. So, that's why this great Achari is telling us do not forget it. Remember it constantly who you are. Okay. Now, let's look at next verse 323. Vishe abhimukham drishtvaha vidvasam api vismriti vikshepyati dhi doshe yoshaha jaram iv priyam. Vishe abhimukham, hankering after the sense objects. Drishtvaha, seeing or finding. Vidvasam, a wise person. Api means even, vi samriti, forgetfulness. Vikshepyati, torments. Dhi doshe, through the evil propensities of the intellect. Dosh of the intellect. Dhi doshe. Yo shaha, a woman. Jaram, a lover. Iv, just as. Priyam, excessively fond. Finding even a wise person hankering over the sense objects. Forgetfulness torments him through the evil propensities of the intellect. As a woman torments her fond lover. Okay. So the forgetfulness of the divine within is natural to any ignorant, deluded person. So deluded person will forget. But how can a wise person forget his real nature? We can remember everything else so easily. Why is it so difficult to remember God? Sometimes we blame God. That God, you are the one who created this Maya and we have forgotten you. But the truth is that God never makes us forget. It's only vishe abhimukham. When the mind is turned outward, that's, who, that's how we forget who we are. You forget your own divine nature, then you come to play like a fool. God is seated right here. But we just don't want to look within. We want to look outside. Sometimes we say that God is the one who created all this. All the objects also. The senses also. But we forget the purpose of the senses and the purpose of the objects. And the purpose of our life also. We forget that. And that's why we fall into is ignorance. The sense organs are turned outward. They definitely see the sense objects. But if a person is a Vidwan, his attention, he has learned how to do it. That senses are looking outside, but you got to keep an eye on who you are also. Otherwise, these vasanas, they keep on growing. Desires keep on growing, passions, jealousy, greed, all those are the ulcerations of the intellect. Intellect does not work properly. So that's why he is bringing all this. And Jar, Jar is a secret lover. He uses his partner for his own satisfaction. When a person is a secretly in love, and the beloved is beyond reach, the memory of that uh, sweetheart haunts the jar and makes him or her miserable. So this is the point he's trying to make over here. So God is already inside. Our soul is nothing but God, but we have forgotten it. And we are just panting for it because we have forgotten. So we are wedded 
to the self, which is Brahma. Because if Atma is nothing but part of the Paramatma, there is a connection between the Atma and the Paramatma. But we just have a secret love with the matter outside, with the Maya. So over here, this jar is the Maya. We are supposed to love God, but we just love the Maya. And that's why we are hurting. So constantly fascinated by the objects of this world. See in the previous verse when we saw that Vyatha, Vyatha is why? Vyatha is because of going outwardly where we should not and we feel misery. So once we start acting disloyal to our own divine nature, we become miserable. Like the beloved haunted by the memory of the secret of lover. Can tell anybody, but hurting inside. Okay, so we got to start loving that part of us where we have come from, which is God. That is the real love, not the Maya. Okay. So 324. Yatha apkrishtam shevalam kshan matram natishthati avri noti tatha maya pragyam va api prang mukham. Yatha means just as. Apkrishtam removed. Shevalam the moss. Kshan matram for a moment. Nathishthati does not stay away. Avrinotihi covers. Tatha means also. Maya, illusion. Pragyam, a wise person. Va api, even. Prangmukham, extrovert. As moss, even if, it, if removed, does not stay away for a moment but closed up to cover the water again. Okay, there's a moss in a pond, completely filled with that green moss. With the hand, you move it, and you the minute you take the hand out, the moss covers the water again. So also Maya, or Avidya, covers even a wise person's if he ever gets extroverted. So this is the danger. We can call ourselves wise. The minute we become extroverted, bahirmukhi, see parang mukham, that's a bahirmukh, outside. We started looking for the maya and we forget who we are. Okay, so it's the analogy he is giving us with this moss. I'm sure you are all familiar with this moss. Any still water, moss will grow over there. So it's almost like a ponds which are neglected, where there's no movement. And it's just completely, and what happens with this green moss? You cannot see the sky in it. You cannot even see the water. The beautiful water is underneath, but you cannot see it. The same thing happens over here. Okay. So we start looking outside and we forget who we are. <clears throat> In our own mind, Maya comes and covers our vision of the infinite. So moss is like a Maya on our mind. So in our heart, there's no reflection of the divinity. Only thing we have is vasanas and the thoughts. They cover up the experience of the infinite. So even we, if we had experienced it here and there, but this maya deludes us again. Because our attention has been turned outward. Okay. So a wise person, keep on doing the sadhana. Stay very vigilant. We don't want to stop. So don't become extroverted. Otherwise, 
the experience of reality will stop. So extrovertedness must be annihilated by continuously remembering the presence of God. Continuously, we don't want to take a chance. Verse number 325. Lakshya chyutam chet yadi chitam ishat bahir mukham san niptet tataha tataha parmadata prachyut Keli Kandukaha Sopan Pangtahu Patitaha Yatha Tatha Lakshya Chutam strays from the ideal. Lakshya se Chutho Jana. So strays away from the ideal. Chet Yadi, if Chitam, the mind, the deeper part of mind, Ishat. Slightly. Bahirmukham outgoing. Sun becoming. Nipteet falls. Tataha tataha. Down and down. Parmadataha. Carelessness. Prachyut. Dropped. Kelik. A ball. Sopan Pankvataho on a row of stairs. Patitaha bounces like it bounces down. Yatha means just as, Tatha means similarly. So he is giving us another example over here. If the mind ever so slightly strays from the ideal, ideal means that ultimate purpose, ultimate goal. So if the mind ever so slightly strays from the ideal and becomes outgoing, so that means it has become extroverted, then it goes down, just like a ball, carelessly dropped on a flight of stairs, bounces down from one step to another. Going up is hard, lot of sadhana, coming down, is very easy, just like this ball. So, it, so the, over here, he's giving us a reason for the fall, even for the wise person, because wise person become, became careless. His attention from the ideal, the ultimate goal, has shifted away, became careless. So if the attention is diverted even a little, even a little, the mind very easily becomes extrovert. Because mind, what is mind? Mind is made out of a prakriti. Mind is the evolute of the prakriti. So that's why it loves to go towards the prakriti. So that's why mind has to be controlled properly. So if the mind is not turned inward, it will definitely turn outward. So that's why in our meditations also, we have to keep a strong control on our mind. Otherwise, it just starts to fancy, starts to imagine. So if our thoughts turn away from our goal, even a little, the thoughts then run towards the outer world. And when the thoughts are turned outward, <laughs> Stage by stage, step by step, we will reach towards that vyatha, the misery. So to drive home this idea, to really, so that we can remember clearly, he's giving us an example of this ball. Ball, if it slips from our hand due to our carelessness, even though we did not do it deliberately, we didn't mean to throw it down, but accidentally, negligently, it just slipped out of our hand. What happens? Step by step, it will come to the ground. And that's exactly what happens to us also. Okay. 326. <clears throat> 
विशेषु आविशत चेता हा संकल्प्यति तद्रुनान तद्गुनान सम्यक संकल्पनात का महा का मात पुंसा पर वर्तनम विशेषु इन द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स आ विशत एंट्रिंग और टर्न्स टू आ विशत चेता हा द माइंड संकल्प्यति becomes intent tad gunan upon their qualities samyak sankalpanat from intentness kamah desire kamat from desire punsah of the man purvartanam activity when the mind enters the sense objects it reflects upon their qualities from mature reflection arises desire after desiring a person sets about to gain that thing and thus fulfills his desire so how did it start thinking about the object we saw that in bhagavad gita also the same verse same meaning so when the mind enters the sense objects that means when the mind entertains the sense objects starts thinking the trouble starts if the objects come to the mind by themselves nothing happens if your mind goes to the objects you are a victim so that means the objects are fine outside objects are not the problem problem is our thinking about the objects note the difference it is like someone coming to your house somebody comes to your house you are still the master somebody is coming to your house maybe they want something from you you are the master you are the controller but when you go to somebody else's house you are a guest he is the master so the same thing with the objects objects are there to use but when they use you that means you have created that lust for them thinking about the objects so mind has gone outside the mind just stays here inside sure food is there i need to eat the food put it in your mouth why mind has to go into the food keep the mind where it belongs otherwise we are asking for a trouble so when mind enters the object it starts imagining their contents and it keeps on contemplating the objects only and it starts to believe that there is some great joy in the object that's why mind wants to start seeking that object in order to get at that illusory joy so if the mind is seeking the object it's always prompted by a desire which can be fulfilled only by its possession and intimate enjoyment that's why lord krishna told arjun wage this war do your duties but put your mind and intellect into me he did not say just with your mind fully do all that he said just do it that's all keep your mind where it belongs controlling of the mind what it is called we have learned it earlier because when it runs into the objects and we try to control it it's called shama 
that is a quality need to be cultivated Isham. controlling the sense organs so that the sense objects may not enter the mind is a dumb so that's why sham and dumb together we need to cultivate but the sham is higher than the dumb okay if we just control only the senses not the mind we haven't reached there yet so if the mind is continuously going towards god desire of god will increase and this is what we need to do instead of let the mind going into the objects worldly objects the maya let the mind go towards god that's an easy path this is the sadhana spiritual sadhana are we doing it are we remembering it and how much we are succeeding we know our own mind thinking about others mind stop that start paying attention to your own mind where is it going what kind of a mischief is creating or is it going towards the right place or not let's look at 327 and 328 together 327 your books might have a different numbering because i have a little notation over here from last time so uh, but uh, if uh, it's uh, not just then you can go 327 could be 328 in your book i have some kind of a notation here i don't know what it was but it starts like this tataha swaroop vibhrinsha विभ्रष्टा तो पतति अदा पतित विना नाशम पुनः न आरोहा ईक्षते एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज संकल्प व्रजेत तस्मात सर्व अनर्थ से कारण अभ्यान ही वस्तुनि व्याथी द्रस्ता यथा उत सृजेत तथा तथा मीन्स therefore svarup vibhrasha deviation from the real nature svarup vibhrasha okay vibhrasta the deviated or a deviated person to means but patati false adha down patitasya of the fallen person bina without nasham death punah again no means not aroha rise ikshyate is seen in the next verse is sankalpam means reflection upon objects sankalpam vrajyet should give up tasmat therefore sarav anarthasya for all the mischief karanam the root cause abhyani prohibited he means verily vastuni things vyathi grasta the victim of the disease yatha means just as ut srijet gives up through negligence a person may deviate from his real nature the person who has thus deviated falls the fallen comes to ruin and is rarely seen to rise again therefore just as the eatables abhyani those are like a uh, eatables prohibited by the doctor are not taken by the victim of the disease one should totally give up the habit of reflecting upon the sense objects which is the root cause for all the mischief okay 
So if we fall from our real nature, the true nature, going down is very easy. There's no question of our ever easily understanding the nature of the self. It's like I've fallen down, it takes harder to climb up. So we got to be very careful. Don't identify yourself with the non-you. Because when the real nature is forgotten, there is a deep, it's like a almost a slipping down. Just like he gave, the, gave us the example of the ball. It's very hard to control that ball then. If it's falling down, it's going to keep on falling down further and further. So in order to fall, or in order not to fall, renounce idle thinking of the world of objects. Okay. At least we can do that. There's no need to think about it. And we still think, keep thinking about the things. Past, do we really need to think about past? What we learned, the lessons, that's fine. But we don't need to go back to the past again and again, the memory lane. Okay, so in order not to fall, renounce idle thinking of the world of objects. Refuse to entertain them. Anytime a mind goes towards the objects, bring it back to the thought of God. That's why it said that shwas, shwas me Bhagwan ko yaad karo. Remember God with each breath so that there's no chance of mind going into the outer objects. Because normally we contemplate upon the objects and we think we'll get a pleasure from it. But what happens? There's no pleasure in the objects. It's just only our imagination. So renounce, reject, refuse all the idle churning of the mind. Have this kind of a strict discipline. I don't want my mind to keep on thinking about the past or worry about the future. And he is giving us example over here that something which you are not supposed to eat, if you eat, what will happen? Of course, you'll get sick. Doctor said, don't eat this. But if we still eat it, if it is uneatable, it is not good for us, then we should know. Reject and rise above the senses. Anytime the sensuous ideas, they come, Turn your thoughts away from them. Be the master of your thoughts. Don't become the slave to your thoughts. Let's do one more verse. 329. Ataha pramadat na paraha asti mrityu viveknaha brahma vida samadhau samahita siddhim upeti samyak samahita atma bhav savdhana he is using the word savdhan now. Very strong word for seekers. Ataha, therefore, pramadat, the negligence, or then negligence. No means not, para means greater. Asti means there is. Mrityu, death. Vivekinaha, man of discrimination, man of discernment. See, this whole scripture is about discernment. Vivek Chudamane. Brahm Vida, the knower of Brahm. Samadhau, the Samadhi. Culmination of meditation is called Samadhi. Samahita, man of abidance. Siddhim, success. Upati, attains. Samyak, complete. Samahit Atmaha, man of abidance. Samahit. Bhav means become savdhan, alert. Therefore, to the discriminating knower of Brahma, there is no greater death than negligence to Samadhi. 
but the person who meditates regularly attains complete success. Therefore, carefully meditate upon Brahma in your mind. So in other words, as seekers, we should never be careless in our steadfastness to God, to Brahmahood. Do not forget this. That's what he's telling us. Because the moment you forget, the fall will happen. Because what happens, the moment we think, we forget who we are, we start thinking outwardly. Whether it's a body or whether it's what we have achieved or what we have, our mind just keeps on going away and away from us. So forgetfulness is death because it immediately, what happens actually? When we forget, we start imagining. Imagination starts. And imaginations, what do they bring? Desires. And what do the desires do? They give birth to activity. More the desires, more the workaholics. That's why Lord Krishna said everything in the right proportion. Yukta ahar, yukta karam, yukta cheshta, everything. Yukta, not excessive. Okay, so desires give birth to activity and activity, what happens with the activity? If we keep on working, keep on doing, stay busy, more and more vasanas because impressions are there. Every action, there will be impression and we are not thinking about it. We are thinking about just action and action and what do we get out of it? The fruits also and then more vasanas. And more vasanas, more thoughts. More thoughts, more activities. It's just like a vicious circle never ends. So in order to exhaust all this, we need to do what he is telling us. Instead of falling down, we got to become very careful. Don't become careless. So, other than forgetfulness, there is no other death. So, forgetfulness. For madatna paro asti mrityu. That's what he's telling us in the very, in the Second part of this verse. Okay. After the ataha, then that's what he's saying. Pramadat na para osti mrityam. And when the mind is withdrawn from the object, emotions, all of that worldly things, tell your mind to contemplate upon Brahma. Refuse to have any other sankala. Just Brahma, the God. Any name of God but you are remembering God. Gita said the same thing. Chapter 6, verse number 25. Lord Krishna is saying, having set the mind upon that, that means Brahma, never initiate any new line of thought. Atam samstham manaha kritvana kinchitapi chintiet. You are not supposed to think about anything else. At least for a few minutes a day, we can do that. If 24 7, we can't do it, start the day with that. Thinking about only God, nothing else but God. Before sleeping, nothing but God. Don't start planning the next day. Do the planning beforehand if you want to, but right before sleeping, think about God only for a few minutes. That's what Lord Krishna is saying. Contemplate upon the self with great care. And that's what it really means. So, Savdhan. Savdhan. And we'll see that if you are very careful about it, but as soon there will be a blossoming. It's almost like a flower outside. You give enough water. Enough light, good soil, and then just watch it grow. You don't have to do anything else. 
the same thing over here in our sadhana too. Keep these enemies away, this negligence, carelessness, and do what needs to be done, and there will be blossoming. We are that, but we have forgotten that we are that. So be savadhan from all this negligence. So do it very carefully. Slowly, it will take time. And it's okay for this to take time because we have forgotten this for so many lifetimes. We have layers and layers of vasanas. But if we continue doing this, we will gain a state of inner peace. We will know that we are fully abiding in ourselves. We'll know who we are. And that's where the peace is. That's where the bliss is. That's where the joy is. So we got to do our part. Okay, let's just stop the class here and uh, do the mantra and then we'll uh, have a little uh, discussion. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnase Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much for coming.